We are talking about the Acts, and we're looking at a few key themes that we see in the Word of God. The first one that we dealt with was prayer, where we say position ourselves accurately, and we will seek Him, seek His kingdom in His presence, and because we want to know His will, His mandate for our lives. Amen. We see that amazingly, um, how it was established in the New Testament church. The second one was all about precision. I can only be precise in everything that I do if I have faith that comes from the Word of God. Because precision comes from the Word of God. So we seek His will, but we study His Word so that there can be precision in how we act out in faith. How we step out in faith. Because we are precise in the things that we believe. Because we find it from the Word. Third one was our, we have a perspective, an eternal perspective. That's accurate how we see things. We see the worth of certain things. We see the worth of knowing that my opinion is not always right. Or that my opinion must be put before him and put before the word. And then I must see what is coming back to me. What is God's opinion about something? Because I can be strong in my opinion. And I can put a very intense value to my own opinion and the perspective is wrong and the perspective can be so wrong oh man and if, when you take offense and oh, when we feel different emotions we can have our opinion and it's so precious to our offense so precious to our hurt so precious to our disappointments that I keep that but I need a perspective that will set me free, that I'm free. Perspective that comes from there, going into the future, that I understand life is not just but this, but this influences a major lot for the future and for what's happening around me. Amen. That was number four. Number five is prayer, precision, perspective, then preaching. Preach through your life. Preach through how you live. They knew it. They were speaking about the way. The Pharisees said, you're not allowed to speak about the way. What way? About, they call it the way. The way Christ, the, the breakthroughs through Christ. They said, you're not allowed to speak about it because you fill, you fill Jerusalem with, a word, you f with your word. You fill Jerusalem with your teaching. And these guys acknowledge that the whole Jerusalem is full of the teachings from Christ. May that be the testimony in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus, that Bloemfontein will be filled with the teachings of Christ. And Bloemfontein, that the city, that the nations, that South Africa will be filled with the words of Christ. Let it be so in Jesus' name. If New Testament church is established what we see in the book of Acts, it's, it's not just restored, but we go into a higher dimension of that. It's supposed to be so much more than in those days when we get into the final restoration, final revival for that what God wants to do on earth. Amen? Fill the world. Fill your environment. Not the with the words of justification, not with the words of whatever you want to call it, but fill it with the word of God. The atmosphere around you, the atmosphere of your heart, of your mind, what is happening there? It must be filled with the word. It must be alive in you. Hello? So it's preaching as you speak the way. Tonight, we're talking about the power. Prayer, precision, perspective, preaching, power. They had power. The power of God manifested through their lives because they were empowered. Empowered by His grace. Grace that brings forgiveness, but also grace that empowers. Because of His grace, you were given the power and you were empowered to become a child of God. And the power of hell over your life was broken because of grace. Hello? Because of grace. So grace to be forgiven, but grace also to be enabled how to walk now as a child of God. But if the enemy can get you out of that place of not just understanding, yes, thank you for the grace, I'm forgiven. And thank you for the grace that I will not be in trouble. And if I'm in trouble, I will be forgiven. Grace is there so that if I'm in trouble, I, tomorrow I will be forgiven. No, 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 no. 
grace that you don't have to perform tomorrow to win forgiveness, to win his favor, to win his love, to win. Hello? To know that you are not disqualified from the race because of the grace, the enablement, the power. The power. That's why you will, you will boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because this power is because of His grace. We say, power to stand in your work. Now you remember all of this, I know. Prayer to seek His will, precision to study His word, perspective to see the worth of certain things, preaching to speak about the way. And to live that way, power to stand in your work. To stand in your work. If these principles are established in you more and more and more, you will be able to stand in what God has given you to do. Why? Because you are so excellent. Yes, through His grace. Through His grace you are made excellent, and His excellence will come forth through your works, through what you say, through what you sing, through what you dance, through what you paint, through what you establish with your businesses. So it will be, but because of grace. If you work with the grace. Paul says, the grace was not given in vain to me, because I worked with the grace. He was not talking about him missing hell. He was talking about tomorrow, how he worked with the empowerment that came from God. Let it be so, in Jesus' name. Okay, we talked about all these things, about a lot about, yeah, Psalm 119 also, I believe you looked into that, how we need to accept his word, study his word, see his word, keep his word, do his word, speak his word, sing his word, enjoy his word. Everybody give me the face when you enjoy his word. Uh, I believe some of you. Okay. Let it be so in Jesus' name. And please go with that prayer pointers, that 48, and challenge yourself to grow in all of that. I believe that's okay with you. So, we see that. How the guys, the apostles, the, the deacons, not the demons, and the disciples, how they stood in their work. Even when Paul in jail, what did he do? They were chained. They were laying there, sitting there, but they stood in their work. How? As a priest. You were called according to Revelation. Forever and ever you will be called to be kings and priests for our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. We spoke about this 3,000 times. Right through Beyond eternity, you will be kings and priests. Now you are learning how to be kings and priests. But even when Israel just came out of Egypt to the mountain, God said, you are my special treasure. I brought you on eagle's wings to myself, and you will be a kingdom of priests. You will be a kingdom. You will be kings. You will have authority. Priests, you will have intimacy with me. I will draw you close. But I will give you authority to look at the world in a certain way because I also created you to rule. You with me? Then the Apostle Peter come and tell the New Testament church, you are a kingdom of priests. We find that also in the letter that Peter wrote to the church. Hello? A kingdom of priests. Kings and priests. As kings, we understand the line of Judah when the line is roaring. It's God's voice. And when the lion roars, everything. <sighs> Amazing how in the world, people that even don't follow Christ, that they have this thing about the lion that has the final say, and not the elephant, or not some other thing, or not the dinosaurus of old, but the lion. <laughs> and Jesus says he's the lion of Judah. Yes, behold the authority through the line of Judah that when you speak, the roar from heaven will come through your voice. But also the lamb, the lamb that talks about intimacy. You as a priest towards the lamb of God, place of intimacy. As a priest, you stand and minister in his presence. 
they stood in the spirit as they ministered unto the Lord. While sitting there in chains singing praises unto the Lord. In their hearts they were standing. Standing in the presence of God. But as kings also standing with authority knowing who will have the final say. God and his word. That will be the final say. The word can come. You're not allowed to speak. We will speak. If we must obey you, that's one thing. But we will have to obey what God is saying, the apostle said. Hello? So when the voice wants to come in you that says, I feel uncomfortable to speak about the gospel, I feel uncomfortable about to speak about Christ, um, tell that voice, me, I'm a spirit. I will do as Christ says. I must do. As he is saying, so it will be. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If God says be still, you, be, you will be still. But if he says speak, you better be speaking. Let it be so in Jesus' name. We spoke a little bit about this uh, two or three years ago, about the fact that we're supposed to stand. Now, when we speak today again, that through his grace and his power, we need to stand and do the work. Yes, we stand as priests, we stand as kings with authority and intimacy. But I just want to give you that five, what you call it, acronyms, with S-T-A-N-D. Can you remember that, please? This is just for that it will be just day, day and day. First one is to sow through his cross your life as a seed. If you can sow through his cross your life as a seed, you've been called to give your life as a seed. But if it's not through the cross of Christ, you will destroy your life and not deny. Jesus says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. But it's all in the context of the cross of Christ. There's no way if you stand, and God says stand, and you stand without the cross, you stand in pride, you are cursed to fall. You must fall. The only way you are allowed to stand is to stand in Christ when you say, I'm crucified, I'm laying down my life. This seed must fall in the ground and it must die. Because the old me is thinking rotting rubbish. And I don't want that. So the way to stand, first of all, is always, always the cross of Christ. So through the cross of Christ, your life as a seed that will be, that is crushed, but that will bring forth 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. So to stand the foundation, I will boast in the cross, Paul says, and in the cross alone. Galatians 6, because Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He lives in and through me. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so, through his cross, your life as a seed. Second one, T, for a stand, S-T. Take up his armor as a soldier. First, first point, I'm a seed. Second one, I'm a soldier. Seed through his cross, soldier through his arm, armor that I will pick up. When the enemy comes to you and you think, who are you? He f cannot look first at the mistakes. He's looking at the armor of God. When you standing with the, with the sword of God in your hand, he needs to back off. Because if you know how to deal with the word, if you know how to correctly analyzing and dealing with the word of God, he must back off. Are you with me? And so with the helm of helmet of salvation to protect your thoughts that you all the stupidious thoughts will be taken captive and that you will think what he is thinking. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, so that your heart is protected with a word and what comes from here is in with right standing with God. With my heart I stand in the right position with with God. This is the armor of God. The belt of truth. Truth that I bind around my waist as I go, as I go with what I have. Shoes for the readiness of the gospel. Where you go, there the living gospel go. There the truth goes. When you walk in a place, the word is walking in. Hello? And the enemy must flee. 
Because when the word comes in, when the word of God comes in a place, the enemy must go. Stand, stand, stand. But you cannot stand with that stature if you didn't go through the cross of Christ to deny yourself. Because then you're going to boast in your successes and not boast in the cross. Hello? Let it be so, my brother, my sister. Yes, and the shield of faith. Because the faith coming from the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. Hey, faith comes from hearing, hearing from the Word. So it's once again about the Word. Enemy comes, you just point the Word. God's Word says, pshew, pshew. you don't have a fight with the enemy, you just put the Word. Pshew. He has lost. And you must look into God has said, and you know, I've lost. I cannot reason with a man because he just put the words of God in my face. The enemy cannot reason with you. You cannot have fellowship with the enemy because if he wants to come, you put the word of God in his face. Hello? Stand. By his grace, you can stand. Hallelujah. This is how it happened. Even with the stones came to Philip, he stood even when he was like crushed in, on the ground, even when it's this black mess situation with stones. Just think of it, how it must look. The stones being thrown, not just one, and see if he's dead. Stones raining down. And in that, he still stood as a priest, doing intercession for those who were throwing the stones. That was a man who stood till the end. You with me? That you will stand even if the stone's coming your way. That's a man that's standing. Take up his armor as a soldier. A for stand. Accept his calling on your life as a sower, where you will sow. The sower went out to sow the seed. The seed is the word in this picture. You will always sow something. You will sow destruction or you will sow doubt. You will sow things that will bring, be like poison or you will sow the word of God. But what? it's not like I choose not to sow. No. It's, like, it's not like you choose not to breathe. It's just there. It's a pattern that is set for a human being. And the pattern that is set for a human being is also you will have a harvest through your life. There will be a sowing and a reaping. But the thorns and the thistles, you will sow that and that you will, re you will reap that. You will sow with your words things that a lot of thistles and thorny things that will hurt other people. Hello? When they walk over that, when they come close to you, you will hurt Oh, you will sow the words of healing, trust, hello, hope, love, peace, joy. That's the words. Oh, and we know how to sow destruction. We know how to sow doubts. And now we can stand on the right and wrong of that. Like we said in the past, you have one right, die and go to hell. But based on truth... Yes, you must hear God's wisdom, how to deal with every situation. Hello? But if you cannot see your brother, your sister, your wife, your child, your, your father, in the light of his truth, and speak life over him, there's something wrong in your system. There's something wrong in your system. If there's still a fight here with someone, Jolene, if you're still fighting with John Dean in your heart, you have a real, a, a real issue. And you actually, the enemy can use you and try to use you to curse that man. Because when you have an issue and you and it start to come out here, the enemy is excited because curse that guy, man. He's a this and he's like that and he's like that and he's like that. Curse him. And all the demons in hell says, Amen. Let it be so. Because you're a sower. This is part of your calling as a human being. Please, let us sow 
the incorruptible seed of the word. Where it says that we will have a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest for us to eat it all up. No, that will be freaky. But the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest is for so many others. Yes, God will give you seed again to sow and bread for the eater. Yes, God will give you both. God is not a bad boss with all respect. Say that with respect. No, he's an the most excellent boss that you can have. Are you with me? But that hundredfold harvest is for such a lot of people. It's for impact for so many others around you. It will be, it can be, and it shall be so for your life. Amen. We're talking about stand. U.S. U.S. So through his cross, your life is a seed. You take up his armor as a soldier. You accept his calling on your life as a sower. N for stand. You notice, you are aware of, you notice his works as a student. You notice, I can see that, what he's doing. I can see God in creation. I can see his hand moving there. I can see the beauty in that situation. I can see how I must... Stand by faith. Stand in faith about different situations. Hello? But for that, you need to be the student. And he must be the master. So we see in the book of Job, the situation where Job was in this emotional tantrum, going through a lot of things. And what did God say? Because when you have a lot to say, be careful, you're not the Lord... Not very teachable. If you have a lot to say, just be careful. Because some of the people that think they know a lot, they, eh, eh. the foolish many times, they are running over their words. But the wise that come to know him will first be silent to hear him. He's the master. I need to learn from him. I will I will need to see it. I need to notice it. Where he is and what he's doing. Because I'm the student. And I will move if he moves. I will say if he says. I will act if he acts. If not, you are you with me? That song, you move to the left, you move to the left. You remember that song? Yeah. So with that I'm saying, we find there's Job and he had a lot to say. Reasoning, reasoning, reasoning. Be careful for the reasoning. And God came and he said, I will sit and you come then and you teach me. So God says, I will be the student. And then he asked him the questions. Where, where were you when I created that? Where were you when I made that? <laughs> so if your thought patterns and your... Ah, all the conversations in your heart, if it's so real and a lot of things that you don't understand, you just voice it and, and your heart gets stuck in your circumstances. You don't understand a lot of things and you get stuck in the things that you don't understand. Get back to basics. Don't get stuck in the things that you don't understand. Get back to basics. And God started with Job with the basics, man. When I created the sea and the wind, no complex questions from Job. He comes with an answer. No, he, he ignores those, all those questions. He's not going to answer. He's answering, but not on the platform that Job created. He determines the platform where he will speak to you. And then, even the prophet said, Job, stand still. It's like, shh, behold, see the wondrous works of God. And then only when Job saw that, then Job said, I've spoken about things that I don't know of. Things too wonderful to attain. Things too wonderful. And then when he became teachable, he said, I will be silent. Lord, come. And teach me. Be still and know that I am God. 
so many t things about that. He still has to do with you are in awe of who he is. And as a student, you can come as a student to the Word and with clever ideas, and you can just put the clever ideas further in here, and you'll become a very excellent Pharisee that think you're doing God a favor by killing Christ. Hello? Or you can be amazed about who God is, and in the amazement about who He is, come to the Word and be more amazed at who He is. Be more amazed about what he is doing out there and in and through your life, what he wants to do. Amen? Come on, man. Come on, man. May God help you and help me. The last one, D. So we sow through his cross the seed, take up his armor as a soldier, accept his calling on your life as a sower, notice his works, what he has done as a student. Last one, declare through his name your stature as a son. Declare through his name your stature as a son. If, you, if it's not for his name, you have no stature. No stature. But also not just mentioning his name because many of people are using his name as a swear word. But you come in the representing of his name. I, with my life, my life is found in his name. I run into his name as a strong tower. I love his name. I'm associated with his name. I respect his name. I honor his name. And whatever thoughts I have or ideas, it will bow down to the name that is above all other names in heaven and on earth. And God gives me that name. See, so you can use my name. I'm associating myself with you. That when you go out there, I'm good with you to be identified with me. That's the faith that he has in you and in me. So to stand, declare, declare through his name your stature as a son. But if we have offense or if we are fed up, we think we need to stand up for ourselves and, and do the thing. That's total immature childish way of doing. No, man. But when you have stature, the fight is not inside. When you have stature, the peace is here. And you say, God, what must I do? Even when they did all the things wrong, Jesus just stood there. And only when the Father would say he must say something, he will say. Otherwise, he gave no answers, even if he was belittled, even if he was mocked, even if whatever. But what comes our way? What will we do with that? We will confirm that we, don't, we, that we have no stature. Or we will grow up. <coughs> we will grow up. Let it be so in Jesus' name, because the sons... The child, yes, the child has a need. The son, my need is to fulfill his need. Father, what do you want? What do you want me to do? That's the son. The focus is, the whole thing is every time to focus on him. Because even the son, Jesus Christ, said, look through me. I'm the way to the father. So you want to be a son that through your life, you are the way, a way to the father. Away to the Father. Because people can see your stature, your success, the way that you operate. It's not just you. You're like a son working with a father. That's your Father God. You are working with your Father God. Hello? Come on, man. So God wants to arrest your focus to come to understand what is fathering all about. May he help you. May he really help you. Because going on there, doing your thing, it's okay. It's okay. God the Father, he, he gives us the room to be like having a prodigal mentality. Not like a prodigal son leaving the house, but a prodigal mentality that gives you the poverty mentality. Hey, Those two go actually together because you will 
very quickly have a poverty mentality because you don't know what you have in Christ. The prodigal son actually had the poverty mentality already in the house. We can be in together as a spiritual house and you can still have the poverty mentality and then it means one day when I have this when I can do my own thing when I can do this or that, 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 that that's the dream of the prodigal mentality of the man in the, of the son in the house and with a poverty mentality he became the prodigal son and when he came back those things had to be addressed even with the older son do you not know that what I have is yours? Do you not know how awesomely blessed you are in Christ Jesus? If Christ, God has given, the Father has given you Christ Jesus, how will he not with him also give you all things that you need? Paul writes to the church. Super, abundantly, above all that you think or pray, with a cup running over. That is God's plan, man. Not for a superficial prosperity teaching, but for the honoring of the passionate heart of your Father God, of how He wants to be there for you. If you can stand, and creation is waiting, Romans 8, creation is waiting and subjected to frustration. Any one of you been frustrated in certain ways? Subjected to frustration till what? To the manifestation of the sons of God. So he's like, mm, 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 in my life and going through until I rise up in my stature as a son. Son. And as you rise up in as a son, you liberate creation. Freedom comes in your environment, in your business, in your relationships, in Bluefontaine, in the nation. When the church rise in their stature in the, in the, the nation, the nation will be <sighs> free. But if the church don't rise, the nation is subjected to frustration. And the frustration is there, and it's a fight. It's a fight in your heart. It's a fight with your emotions. It's a fight with people. It's a fight with things. But you are fighting in your head, and you're fighting with people all in the whole process, because you are not rising. You're not rising. Where it's about your God, beyond yourself, and not about you. Come on, guys. That was the last point. That is the last point. When you come into that place, the enemy will know. The atmosphere will know. He's coming in the name of his Father. He knows the Father. It is as if the Father is here. He comes as an ambassador. It's as if the Father is here because he knows the Father's heart. He, know, he knows this man, what the Father feels about this type of thing. The Son knows what the Father is thinking, knows what he's feeling, knows the, 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 the way that he will approach things. The Son has learned the patterns of God, the behavior of his Father. Hello? You come into that place. The enemy cannot stand there. You know it's finished. I'm finished here. I cannot argue with that man. Because he knows God too well. <laughs> Him and his father, they are like this. <laughs> she and her father, they are, she's, they are like this. It's a man of stature. Hello, a son of God. That's you. And who you are busy becoming. Me and who I am busy becoming. And when the, the company of believers, when the company of believers, according to, I mustn't go there, the Hebrews, in Hebrews, more and more in the end time, the church are the firstborn. The church are the firstborn. That's the church with the sons of God. That's among the church. There will be a group of people. Among the people. There will be a group of people. Sons of God that will rise up and he, God will take the sons and he will impact the nations with them. The church will still be there. The children will still be there. They will still go to heaven. But he needs that company of people. The church of the firstborn. He needs and he's raising up those who are willing to be raised up to go beyond themselves. Those who are willing to leave the petty things behind. Immature Issues with people behind. 
Those who are willing to do that, he's raising them up. And he's going to use them in the nations because they will know what his father's heart for Italy. What is father's heart for Rome? What is father's heart for Cairo? What is father's heart for that hospital there in Addis Ababa? Where is that again? Capital of some other African country. Don't you know? Ethiopia. Yeah. Okay. Let God and allow God to challenge you in this. Amen. Amen. And all of this power to stand in your work because of his grace. 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 But grace is given after you've been saved from hell into his marvelous life. Grace is given so that you will do your work and stand while you are doing your work and not dying your work. But when you do it with him, you will stand. You will stand. And the grace is there on your life to do your work accurately. God, come and help us. Let's stand before the Lord. God, I pray for every man, woman here, for every priest, every king in this place. God, and so they will stand in your presence as we see the pattern even in the Old Testament. They will stand as priests in your presence and know how to intercede for the nations but also know how to just stand in awe of you how to stand as priests with no words to describe the beauty of what they are seeing open our eyes lord open the eyes of our hearts lord open it lord that our souls will not control anymore immature souls will not control our lives anymore we will take the thoughts into captivity, we will break down the mindsets, the barriers, in the name of Jesus, through the blood of Christ. But I pray and I bless every man, woman here, and those who are listening and watching, Lord, that they will stand in Christ as you have called them to stand, so that your awesomeness, the authority of your word, will be seen. And so that the world can see who is the ones that will respect God. Who is the ones that really fear the Lord in a place of honor? Who is the ones who will stand with Christ? Who is the ones who truly love him? Not just with cheap words. Where are those guys? God, and by your mercy, by your grace, we want to be part of that group. We want to be identified by the world in such a way that we are part of that world. Thank you, Father, that you help us to live that way. As your son said, you sent us in the world, but we are not from this world. And as, Father, you've sent your Son with that stature and authority, Jesus, you said that you are sending us with that authority into the world. Come and, come and touch us in a very special, intimate way. We need you, Lord. Thank you for that, Father. Touch every man and woman in this place in a very special way. In this season, at night time, in the morning early, God, let arrest their focus to see the beauty in life afresh and to draw strength from that place. I thank you that you come and you do that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Look at your neighbor, smile, and in your heart you say, I am beautiful. <laughs> okay. May you be blessed. Awesome week for you. Hey.